Pamela Yellen is a financial security expert and the founder and president of Bank on Yourself. And our goal is to increase your understanding of how the Bank on Yourself concept works. Without further ado, I want to introduce Pamela Yellen, the woman who has helped more than half a million individuals and families find financial success and peace of mind with her common sense approach to personal finance. Pamela? Let's dive in with Paul Nick. Now, Paul is a second generation financial advisor who is going to show you a recent annual statement from a policy his father bought more than 40 years ago. You'll be able to see how these plans perform over time in the real world. Paul will then show you why you would have to get a return of nearly 10% in your tax-deferred 401k or IRA to equal it. I promise you this is going to be absolutely eye-opening. Paul, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Pamela. So what I'm going to do is uh, just take everybody and uh, we're going to dissect this uh, policy statement so that we can get the true return uh, of what uh, the returns on this policy have been uh, over the last 42 years. So uh, if you take a look uh, right here, this is a statement from 2012. Um, the policy was taken out over here on March 7, 1969. This was a few months before I was born, so I'll be uh, 46 years old this year. Um, my father um, bought this policy. I was the second born, so this was an additional, uh, in, in anticipation of me being born, needing to get some additional coverage. The original death benefit uh, started out as $100,000, and in 2012, the death benefit had grown to 237271 Now, the reason the death benefit grows, if you've done any study or research on this concept, is that uh, the companies that we use are mutual insurance companies. So there's two types of insurance companies that you must know about. There's a stock insurance company, which is owned by stockholders, and so the stockholders get the profits or the dividends from the company, uh, whereas with a mutual insurance company, the uh, policyholders are the owners of the company. As such, we get the dividends. Uh, from the insurance company since we're the owners. Uh, there are no stockholders. So <clears throat> if all anybody gets out of this is, you know, um, you know, the next time you're looking at, at life insurance or the, the best types of companies, um, we want to look at mutual for the most part because we're the owners of the company. Now, if we go down uh, a little bit further on this, we'll see that the premium on this policy uh, was $1,000. $54 and 33 cents. So uh, this policy statement, uh, the way that my father funded this was that he paid the premium for 19 years, so from 1959 to 1988, and he hasn't put another dime of his own money into the plan. The plan has been self-funding uh, since then. Uh, if you look over here at the dividend, the dividend in 1988 was changed to pay the premium and increase the cash value and coverage. So that started in the 20th year, and so he hasn't had to put any additional funds into this. 2012 dividend was uh, $5,598, and the total year-over-year -year cash value increase between 2011 and 2012 was $7,598. Total cash value of 153,000. If he had canceled the policy in, nine, uh, in 2012, the insurance company would have sent him a check back for 153,000. And if you do the quick math on 1,054 dollars uh, over 19 years, it's about 20,000 dollars. So if we look at what he received for paying that premium. He received uh, uh, he got all of his money back. Of course, it's 20,000 plus 130,000 dollars profit and he had life insurance over 42 years. Now, remember, I know some people might be saying, well, 237000 isn't a very large uh, policy, but remember, this is one of over 50 policies that, that our family has. Uh, so uh, the first thing, we're going to do a comparison on this. The first thing we have to look at is I want to know, okay, well, what was the year-over-year -year, uh, cash value increase rate of return? So let's take a look at that real quick. If we take uh, $7,598 and subtract it away from $153,000, we get our starting balance in 2011, which was $145,460. Our future value, or 12 months later, was $153,058. Uh, 
We did that over one year, and the calculator tells us that that's a year-over-year -year increase of 5.22%. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't know any bank today that's paying that much, and if we were to uh, actually look at, at the difference in that, a bank, you might be able to get 1% today. Uh, my father and his policy is getting 5.22%. Uh, I think that's a, a pretty good deal for just some safe money sitting someplace. Now, again, this is after all expenses, all costs, and everything. This is the, his net uh, rate of return uh, after everything. Um, so 5.22%. Uh, the next place that we want to take a look at is, all right, well, what if I had done something else with my money? What would uh, I have had to earn over that time period to get to the same 153000 that's in the policy in 2012? So, what we do is we structure out the, uh, the premium payments for 19 years, so 1,054 for 19 years, and then he made no other payment. Now I know, since I've done this, that that's uh, in order to get to the 153,000, if we look down here at the bottom, that's going to give us our, our cash value over that time period or the, the, the accumulation value. So 6.19 percent. So the the Calculator is telling the calculator is telling us that we have, uh, in order to get to the same cash value, we would have needed to get 6.19 percent every single year since 1969 to arrive at the same cash value that's in the policy. But we need to bring some truth into this statement because we have to look at what was available at that time. Where we uh, there weren't a whole lot of mutual funds available back then, but um, so most people, for their safe money, would have been looking at banks or bonds or things like that. But most of these uh, have always been taxable. So we want to bring in some truth to this. If we're going to do a comparison, we need to look at uh, the taxes as well as a factor in getting our true rate of return. So if we turn on, just put in a 30% tax rate, uh, and what we find is that we need to increase now our rate of return to get us back to that 153,000. So we'll put that in. So we're back to our 153,000. So now what it tells me is that in a taxable account, like a CD or a stock or a bond that we'd have to pay taxes along the way, we would need to get 8.84% every single year since 1969 to get that same cash value. If we take this a step further, if most people were going to try to beat uh, almost 9% every single year, they're most likely going to move to the market. Now, we don't like to compare a safe investment to a risky one, uh, but we know that's how people think. So um, we're going to go ahead and bring some additional truth into this. And if we were in the stock market and there were mutual funds available at that time and they charged a 1% fee, then, uh, again, we need to we see that our our uh, balance has been lowered, so we got to bring up our our rate of return here to, to get there. So, so this is how we come up with the the 10 percent uh, every year since 1969. So, if we were in a taxable account that also charged the fee, which is very similar today, uh, that gets us to our 153,000, we would have needed almost 10 percent every single year to get to the same cash value in the policy. Now, we can take this a step further because the other thing that could have happened to my father is that he could have uh, passed away in 2012, at which point the uh, death benefit on the policy would have been paid to my family. So there's a death benefit of 237271 <clears throat> So all we need to do is find the rate of return that gets us to that, that 237 So we know what that is. <clears throat> we'll put that in. So it would take almost a 12% rate of return. Had my father died, we would have needed to get 12% every single year in a similar account that has taxes and fees to get us to that same death benefit. Now, most people that I speak with uh, and work with uh, are, think that a 10% annual return is pretty good. The problem is, is that we need people to understand that this is a long-term strategy. Um, and, and so if this, we're looking at a 40-year history, basically. Uh, but there's not a whole lot of financial products out there that people put money in and keep for 40 years. So that's why we like to show this. In addition, we have a lot of uh, pundits out there on the radio and TV shows that 
that are telling people inaccurate information. So we want to bring out the truth. So when we bring the calculators out and we actually dissect these things, we find that, yes, they actually do perform very well. Today, my father has started pulling his money out of uh, this policy, and so he's receiving the dividends in cash instead of having them reinvested in, into the policy. Uh, real quick, I'll touch on one other thing. A lot of people ask me, well, you know, how would it, the money have done had he put it in the stock market and just let it ride that whole time, right? So what we do is I've copied and pasted all the returns from the S&P from 1969 to 2012, and then we, didn't, we need to add in taxes uh, and fees for that. And what we see is that we would have only ended up with about 104000 versus the $153,000. Um, and real quick, I also want to touch on if we see the fee column here, uh, over that time period with just a 1% fee, they would have uh, removed $22,000 in fees from this uh, mutual fund or whatever it would be. Um, and so we hear a lot of people out there saying that uh, life insurance agents are paid these high commissions and uh, uh, so it, it, it ruins the policy and all that. And so if we go back to that policy statement, we see the premium is 1054 per year. That's not per month, that's per year. The agent on this, uh, this type of policy would have made a total upfront commission of $500, and then he would have been paid a, a renewal for nine years of about 100 bucks. So a total compensation over a 10-year period of $1,400 over this entire time period. When we look at the fees, doing the same thing through Wall Street, total compensation or fees of 22000 So <clears throat> we have to take, uh, when we're listening to other people, we can listen, but let's do some calculations just to make sure that, uh, hey, is that true or is it just something that they're saying, right? Really great presentation, Paul, and you pointed out some very important things that most people will never see. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention is you, you told me before uh, we got on this event that your father had used this policy to cover an unexpected business expense of $81,000, and he needed cash fast, and he was able to contact an insurance company and get $81,000 in less than a week with no questions asked. And what are some of the other ways your family has used the many policies you own? Well, um, obviously me and my brothers and sisters, um, we were all able to have down payments for our first homes that we purchased. And so it was very helpful when you go to the banks and they want to see, hey, where's your cash? And I can pull out statements and say, hey, I've got um, these six policies with uh, you know $100,000 in it. Banks love this stuff because they know it's liquid and it's safe. Uh, so if you're using it as collateral, it works very well. So all of us kids have purchased homes with uh, policy loans. Uh, in fact, my little brother just did that uh, last year. They, they bought their first house. They had a new baby in Austin, Texas. And uh, he was able to get 63000 uh, from our family bank and for their down payment because they've been in law school and other things. Um, they didn't have a whole lot of cash anywhere else, except they did have it in their policies. And then, of course, over the years, um, we've all done financing with cars, and you know, my father uh, and I are both pilots, so we've purchased uh, our own airplanes through our, our policies as well uh, and made those payments back. So it, it, it works exactly like you say it does, and um, um, I'm, my family is proof that over the long period of time that we've been doing this, that it has worked very well. It's multi-generational, and now we're teaching our kids uh, how to do the same thing. Wonderful. Uh, another question I have for you is, uh, you, it, or just maybe a comment, you used a fee of 1% in your calculation, showing a fee uh, in an investment account, mutual fund, etc. But I just wanted to point out, that actually relatively few people pay only a 1% fee in their retirement and investment accounts. On average, uh, the latest research is that participants in small 401k plans pay 1.9%. That's almost 2% in fees annually. And small plans account for the majority of people. And even participants in large plans pay more than 1% uh, a year. And in addition to that, a government investigation found that the fees in IRA plans are often higher than fees in 401k plans. So I wanted to point that out. And uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is you brought out the point that we really need to compare apples to apples. But when most people compare the growth in a bank on yourself plan to an investment account, they somehow 
especially if they're Wall Street advisors and investment advisors, they seem to neglect to factor in taxes and fees. And that can devour an enormous part of your savings. So I thought this would be a good time to remind everyone of two things. Um, first, you can access both your principal and your growth in a bank on yourself plan with no taxes due. And this happens through a combination of dividend withdrawals up to your cost basis. Now, that's the amount of premium you paid into the plan. And then switching to loans against your cash value. By contrast, most people invest for retirement through tax-deferred plans like 401ks and IRAs. But when you go to take income from those plans, you've got to pay taxes on every single penny. And what direction do most people think tax rates are going to go? Most people I talk to think they're going to go up. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that mutual funds and investment and retirement accounts fees are generally hidden, and they compound against you over time. By contrast, in a bank on yourself plan, all fees and commissions have already been deducted. And both your projected results and your annual statements, like the one you just showed us, Paul, reveal your bottom line results. There are no surprises. And unlike mutual funds and other investments and 401ks and IRAs, bank on yourself is kind of like buying a couch or a TV. The cost of sales and manufacturing have already been included in the price, or in this case, the premium. So I wanted to point that out. And uh, Paul, um, I don't think we mentioned, and I want to make sure we do mention this, that the plan that your father started, the, the, the statement that you showed, that he started in 1969, this was before people were really knew about the, the, you know, the extra riders uh, to, that you could add to these plans that make your cash value grow significantly faster. But this policy wasn't even one of those plans. It was really just your basic dividend paying whole life plan without those extra riders. So the plans we're creating today over time can achieve even greater growth. And I think that, that's a pretty phenomenal thing to mention. Absolutely, and, and that's why it's so important to be with the, the right type of advisor as well because not all companies perform the same. And uh, if you're with a stock company, uh, this most likely would not have happened. No two bank-on-yourself plans are the same. Yours will be custom-tailored to your unique situation, goals, and dreams. To find out what your bottom-line numbers and results could be if you added the bank-on-yourself method to your financial plan, request your free no-obligation analysis and get a referral to an authorized advisor by going to bankonyourself.com slash request. Again, that's bankonyourself.com slash request. You have nothing to lose and a world of financial peace of mind to gain. So go to bankonyourself.com slash request right now.